Right now, I feel like we're at the stage of the series where really what we want to focus on is growing our town. And by doing that, we'll produce a lot more resources and a lot more money. As such, the first thing I'd like to do today is get myself a new villager to join us. So then there will be uh, the three villagers and me, of course, four of us working in the town. The only problem that we have is if we go to the management screen, you can see here my dynasty reputation is 280. So I believe we need it to be higher than that. I think 300. I think it's 100 per population. Uh, so, you know, 300 would be three people we could have, including me is four. That's how that works, I believe. Uh, so what I'm going to do is run into town and check the notice board and see if there's any quests there. Sometimes you get quests that are actually pretty easy to do, and we only need a little bit extra reputation to get someone. So let's go and see what's on the board, and hopefully we can find something. Okay, just approaching the notice board now. Let's have a little look here and see what there is. Okay, there are two quests here, guys, that are ridiculously simple. <laughs> One of them here is to deliver eight logs to Derwan. That is is so easy to do. The other one is to deliver another three logs, but also 12 torches and 21 sticks to Derwan. Each of these gives us 100 Dynasty Reputation. So I took both of those quests, and we're going to go ahead and uh, get started on them right now. Essentially, I just want to load up with all those materials and do them both at the same time just to be more efficient. Where am I going? It's down this way. And uh, yeah, so we're going to get that done. And that means that we could actually then uh, get two extra villagers if we wanted to. And I'm pretty tempted to do that. I think what I want to do is get them in, get the town growing nicely and, and being more productive, and then spend my time looking at making sure all of their needs are, uh, sorry, excuse me, their needs are being met. And that's what we're going to focus on. So we'll just go through the process now of delivering that stuff. And then we'll talk about the uh, villagers when we get there. I had a couple of comments in the last episode, which I'll go through because they were uh, talking specifically about workers. And it turns out we can be more efficient and we can also hire better people. So we're going to get on with doing that. I actually made a slight mistake, guys. Uh, if I open up my inventory here, you'll see that what I made up was uh, 12 of the simple torches. Unfortunately, though, that's not what we need. We need to make 12 actual torches. And in order to do that, we're going to need to use the workshop over here. So if we go over to this section right here, it's not too bad. We do have all the resources to make this. Um, but we do need to buy the scheme for 250 first. Now, doing the quest will get us just about that many coins back, and we were doing it for reputation, not money anyway, so it's not the end of the world. But I just need to find some stuff to sell, because uh, at the moment we don't quite have enough coins. We've got 209. At the market here, let's go and see what we can sell. I grabbed a load of this roasted meat here. We can sell a load of that, because it's starting to go off anyway. Uh, these simple torches we just made up, we just as well sell all of those too. So let's get rid of those. And let's see, now we're on just enough coins to be able to buy that scheme and actually complete the quest. So yeah, my bad on that one. But overall, it looks like it is actually going to work out for us. So if we click on one of these quests in our journal, we can put F to trap the quest. Now at the top of our screen, it will take us exactly to Derwan. So that makes things a lot easier to uh, to find him rather than just wandering around the village looking for him. Uh, and so we're going to head over there now and hopefully we can complete both these quests at once. And here he is. So let's have a little chat with him. Um, witchcraft and evil, I understand. Uh, yeah, whatever. Some sort of quest complete. And uh, hey, mate, I'm here about the bridge materials. And yeah, I'm not going to read all that. You guys can if you want. Um, but yeah, there we go. So we've got our dynasty reputation right now. And we're going to look to get some workers. We're actually in the vicinity. So let's just go down and look to get them. Now, uh, it looks like... Uh, so I had a few tips about workers here. And one of the things that was said is that uh, worker age is one of the most important things. If you get them nice and young, their skills will level up over time. And they'll be more valuable to us. So we're going to check out the age and the skills of the workers that we have here. Looks like Slim Pickens, though. There's only three people here anyway, but let's see who we go for. So this is Dalabora, and uh, she's into tracking prey, she says. I think having a hunter in our village could be good. We can start to automate the food then. So let's go back, and I'm creating a village. There we go. She already wanted to join us. That was that was me using my English charm right there. Um, so off she goes, and let's see what this one likes to do. So this one likes either uh, foraging or also fishing. So, I mean, that could be useful, I suppose, but let's see what the other dude does. So this guy also likes to hunt, and I'm thinking, you know, would we rather have two hunters or one person hunting and one person foraging? Let's do the foraging. I think it'll be more interesting for you guys too. Uh, and then we've got people in different professions rather than just doubling up on the hunting. So there we go. Bogner has also <laughs> joined, and our town's coming along quite nicely. We've got a population total now. Let's have a look here of five, so that's the four people plus me. Let's go and make everybody happy and get them housed and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so let's go to our people here, and what we're going to do, let's go Bogner. She's one of the new people. Uh, we're going to assign her to a house. Uh, let's see, simple house, one out of four. Hmm, does she have to live with the dude? Because I was hoping that what we could do... Oh, I guess houses are for families. I was hoping we could put them all in to... Let's see here. Yeah, I was hoping they could all go into this house, right? But apparently they cannot, so... We're going to have to start either making families or we have to make up new houses. Now, I didn't want to go down the route of families, 
because it does mean that uh, they start having children and then they'll take time off work and stuff like that. So I need to think about this one. Okay, who is this? This is Delabora. So what I've done is I've just assigned her to the house with the other dude. Um, I think that's probably the best way to go. So she's living with Bodzapore. Uh, because otherwise they're going to be unhappy and stuff. And we'll just we'll just deal with the kids as we go through. It's going to happen at some point. Anyway, the next thing I'm thinking is I cannot get uh, this uh, girl here. What was her name again? Uh, Bogner to live with me uh, unless we become an item. So I might try my hand at some romance here and then see if I can get her to live with me. So the romance has gone up to 20% and the mood has gone down, but that's nothing to do with me romancing, guys. Okay, let's not get that mixed up. <laughs> but I think we're going to struggle to get her to 100%. So I may just need to build a new house through the night. We probably have a lot of the resources for it anyway. Uh, but yeah, let's see how we go with that. Now, at the moment, everything in this village is just down this one street and things are becoming like a little bit messy and stuff. I've just been focusing on like, you know, production and, and trying to get an efficient village going. I'm going to build another house. Now I'm just going to plonk it down here somewhere. But at some point, I think what I want to do is move the town. I think there's definitely better locations on the map that we can go to. And I think we can get to somewhere that's going to be closer to a cave and turn ourselves into a bit of a mining town. And also, I think I can make things look a lot nicer. In the early game, like we are now, we're just trying to get everything done, you know, very quickly. But by moving the town in the future, I think that's going to be for the best. So let me know your thoughts on that. It's not something we're going to do like immediately or rush into. But uh, just the more that we start building here, the more I keep thinking that having it somewhere else might be good. So we'll just place this house kind of anywhere for now. Uh, I'm not worrying too much about it because things are going to move anyway. Also, I won't time lapse this build just because I've done a couple of houses on time lapses in the past. So if you guys uh, probably seen enough of that, and I'll just spend the, the night time building this house up and then uh, that'll be like a productive way of spending the night. Well, guys, I was out exploring and I managed to die. So end of dynasty right here. Let's see what happens. We hit respawn. We come back here. Now it is still summer, I believe. Yep, okay, so that's good. I don't know what actually changes by us dying. It looks like it's just a simple respawn and we die. I've still got all of my inventory on me, which is good. Uh, my town is the same. Incidentally, uh, Bogner, her mood is improving now. She was very unhappy uh, because she didn't have the house, but we did manage to complete the building of the house. Uh, so you can see this one right here now is a new addition to the village. So I'm not sure what penalties there actually are. I mean, my... My dynasty reputation stayed the same. Yeah, I, I don't think dying is actually that big of a deal. So I just had a little look on Reddit and it seems this is actually a new thing since the update. And in the past, you had to reload a save. And uh, so I think there's, there's mixed reviews from what I can see on Reddit. Some people are happy about this. Some people are not. I've noticed my health is now a fair bit lower too. So, so that's the thing. But uh, what do you guys think about this? I, I wasn't planning on doing like a hardcore series where... If I die, I, you know, I have to start over or anything like that. It didn't really occur to me. I thought this was just like most survival games, um, you know, you just play through. But yeah, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. We're going to continue on with this series. Um, but if it's really upsetting people, then maybe we'll look to add some sort of hardcore element to it in the future. I'm not sure. Uh, for now, I'm going to try and find some of those broadleaf plantains to get my health up a bit. And then hopefully I won't die again. Now, the reason I died, guys, is because I was trying to find some clay deposits and I managed to find one. It was a boar that killed me while I was out searching for them somewhere else. But here we have some clay deposits. So if I open the map, we said we're going to start doing this in the future. And there we are. So I don't know. I guess this brown dirt stuff that you see on the map actually indicates clay deposits. I wasn't aware of that. I was just running around looking throughout the night. Um, but we do have some here. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a few in this area. Now, obviously, these are going to give us clay. But there's another thing we can do with this as well. And that is with the treasure hunter that you see right here. We can get this up uh, using points, which I've already used one on. And we get a chance to find, uh, well, basically treasure whilst we're digging in clay pits. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just use my shovel here now. I'm going to do a bit of digging. And uh, that will obviously improve our extraction skill. Plus, uh, and, and then when we get any you know more skill points to spend, I'll keep updating the uh, treasure hunter thing so that we get a lot of that. Obviously, uh, we're getting the clay as well. But what I'm thinking is this will be useful for selling for money, obviously, but it will also be useful because you can find treasure items that you can use in romancing, which is useful too. Now, it looks like we're filling up pretty quickly, so I'm actually going to go back and get my donkey and bring him over here. Obviously, uh, this is the point of having a donkey, and I probably should have been riding him already. I'm just not used to having one yet. I'm also going to make up some better shovels because I've just got wooden shovels. But yeah, it's just good to know that. Now, whilst we're back at the village, let's go ahead and go into the management screen here. And let's get these people working. There's a couple of things that aren't being done right now. One of them is hunting. And I've got to remember which person wanted to do the hunt, actually. Okay, Della Bora, uh, if we small talk and listen to her skills, uh, she's into tracking prey. So she's going to be our hunter. So management right here. Let's go into the hunting lodge. There we go. And we're going to assign uh, Dalabora. There she is. 
Yeah. So double left click her. There we go. She's in there. Okay, great. And then in the extraction here, uh, we're going to do another one. So let's go down to the, uh, let's see. So I just realized I haven't actually built the herbalist hut just yet. So uh, we need to do that first before we can have a herbalist. So let's see, buildings, uh, it'll be under extraction. And let's see, there it is, herbalist hut number one. It's only a small little building. Again, I'm going to place this a bit out of town, I think. So I'll place this building just up here. We're going to dot some buildings around outside the town. I think it will look a bit nicer. And what I might do is when we, you know, we talked earlier about potentially moving towns later on, this could become a bit of an outpost sort of town later on if we wanted to do that. And so having little things like, uh, you know, still done nicely with like the extractions stuff like that. If we do it that way, I think that could be good in the future. Okay, there's the herbalist hut complete, a very small building, so I didn't do a time lapse of it. And if we head inside here, you see we've got a few different things. Uh, the chest that can hold 50 kilos, and we've got a herbalist table here where you can craft up uh, poisoned ammos, potions, enhancement potions, and healing potions, all the different potions, and the poisoned arrows and stuff. Pretty cool. And we're going to get our person working there. I forget her name, but let's go and do that now. Uh, so this one here, Bogner. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and assign your workplace, which will be the herbalist hut. There we go. And yep, yeah, into that slot there, you're assigned. So that's good. They now all have jobs. Uh, they don't necessarily all have tools. I'm not sure if they need herbalist, uh, if the tools... Sorry, I forgot how to speak English there for a second. I was trying to say I'm not sure if people who work at the herbalist hut need tools or not. I guess we'll find that out and get a notification. Okay, so next up, we want to make up the copper shovel. And if we go over to here, uh, we can make it up. Let's go to copper tools. But we do need to buy it first. It's 100 coins to buy, so we're going to buy that right now. And let's see, four copper bars and two logs per shovel. So let's maybe make up like two of those, get eight of these out. We can do that and do that in a second. Then we're going to get on the donkey and we're going to head back into uh, the clay area and do a bit more digging. Now, one final thing we're going to do before we head back off is go into the uh, building management here and we can be a bit more productive than what we've been being. So let's go to, for example, the extraction buildings right here and we've got the woodshed. Let's double click on that. Now, if we go over here to the uh, the work intensity right here, it's at 75%. Apparently, there's absolutely no issue at all with making that 100%. So what I think I'll do is get that up to like maybe 25 logs a day because that's pretty good. And then I'll put the rest onto sticks for now. So she can collect a load of sticks as well. There's 100%. We get a load of sticks and a load of logs each day for doing nothing. I mean, she's doing stuff, but we don't have to do anything for that. I want to do the same thing with the other things we've got going on too. So we've got, of course, the excavation shed right here. And uh, in this one, we've got clay being produced. We're getting a lot of clay, which is good. Is there anything else we want here? Well, I think copper ore would actually be really useful. Um, we have done some mining, but let's get a bit more mining going on. So let's get that up. And I'm going to put this way down. The clay I'm going to put down. I don't know how much clay we're actually going to need. So let's go down to like maybe just 10% of our work getting the clay right now. We'll get the limestone, which is useful. But the copper is going to be very useful to us because we can actually turn that into useful tools, which we're going to need. And also we can sell it if we want to. So let's get mostly copper going on here. And these are the final tweaks I ended up with. So we're going to get two copper a day, four limestone and five and a bit of clay. So that's pretty good. The other thing we need to do, of course, is do things like the herbalist hut because we've only just got that one. And as you can see here, there is a ton of different stuff here that we can get, although some of this is locked right now. So we need to have a real good think about this one. What I'm actually going to do is just tell her to spend 100% of her time getting berries for now because we're in that season. And uh, we're going to get a lot of berries, as you can see here. And we can turn that into rot and into fertilizer, which is going to be the most useful thing out of all of this for now. As for the hunting lodge, you can see our options right here. You know, meat, dried meat, leather. I mean, this is all going to be good stuff. So we need to have a good think about this. I definitely think leather and fur are going to be really useful because we can craft stuff out of them and they don't go off unlike the meat. So we want to spend a fair bit of time getting that stuff. For the same reason, the dried meat is going to be really useful. So we want to put that up as well. We're going to put that up to like 25%. There's no resources for it right now, but that'll change because we're going to put the meat up as well and put that up to like 25 too. So a quarter time doing just about everything. As for feathers, we've already got a lot of feathers. Plus, we also have the chicken coop, so that's going to be good anyway. And on the food items, I'm going to make sure I uncheck the berries right there because I don't want them to eat those because we want to turn them into rot and they will get put in the food storage here, so we have to be careful with that. So with all that done, we are saddled up. We're going to head back over and do a bit of digging in the clay area. And if we find anything like treasure or anything like that, then I'll show you guys what we find. Okay, I was out getting the clay, guys, and I was about to explore that abandoned house you see up there. It looked really cool. As I get up to that house, there's a wolf <laughs> just waiting at that house for us. And my goodness, that was quite scary. So, yeah, I don't think I'll be exploring that one just yet, unfortunately. If I go to the map, you can see this is where we are. So the house is probably just up there somewhere and uh, might have some goodies in it. We can't really explore it just yet. Uh, we've been doing the clay deposits around here. The, there aren't all that many. I think I've done just about all of them. I'm guessing these are like the ores where they respawn each season. Um, but, yeah, we might need to find another one to keep going. I didn't find any treasure really. I found 0.1 coins in one of the piles. Not the most exciting thing to find. I was hoping to find a gold ring or a necklace or something like that. 
Uh, but yeah, I think we've exhausted this, so we'll try and find somewhere else with some more clay. Now, looking on the map, if these brown spots are anything to go by, then right there is going to be a really good spot for clay. So I'm not sure if that works or not, but let's find out together. I'm going to ride the donkey over there now and find out. Okay, so it turns out these brown spots aren't always about clay. Uh, so this was just like a muddy area of the river. And yeah, we're going to need to go searching further afield if we want to find more clay. Oh, geez, there's wolves chasing me on my donkey. Oh, look at that. <laughs> uh, I think they stopped. Okay. All right. I think we're okay now. That was a little bit scary. There's two wolves there coming at me. Are they distracted by a rabbit? There's a rabbit down there. Are they going for him or are they coming for me? Yep. No, you guys go for the rabbit. Okay. We're just, oh, hey, rabbit. Um, don't come near me. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay, I think they've, they've we've lost them, but that was that was quite scary. I have found another area of clay deposits. I'll just show you on the map where we're at here. You can see just near this bridge here is where they are. Uh, if I scroll back out, then that's where it is in the bigger picture of things. What I've noticed is it's like these patchy brown areas. They do seem to be clay deposits because that's twice now that patchy brown meant clay. So I think that's the uh, that's what we're looking for in the future. So let's keep digging and see if we get a bit more luck this time, find anything a bit more interesting. Well, I did get a lot of clay, but I didn't get uh, any treasure really. I did find one iron arrow, <laughs> so technically we did get something uh, and it's not a completely wasted trip, but yeah, not loads of clay. What I want to do now, uh, sorry, I did get loads of trade, not, not loads of uh, treasure, but let's see what we can actually do with this clay. So we can make all kinds of different vases that are used for decoration, uh, or that actually we don't have the production technology for that yet, but that can be used for that later. And the other thing it can be used for is upgrading houses, which will be something that we'll definitely look at in the future too. So pretty good that we have it. Uh, we'll definitely use it in the future. For now though, it can just live in here. And I've done the wrong thing there. It actually goes this way. I do that quite a lot for some reason. I uh, seem to think of the inventories on the other side. Uh, and we've got this iron arrow, as I say, which, you know, it's worth a little bit of money, but there we go. So I just realized it's actually the last day of summer and we haven't planted anything in the farm yet. We're about to go to a new season. So I'm desperately trying to get to the village in time. As you can see, though, the day is ending. I think we might just be able to speak to someone and buy some seeds. Uh, and actually, how much money do I even have? Uh, 134. That isn't great. But anything we can get in the ground at this stage would be a bonus because I totally forgot about that. Okay, so it turns out we can plant cabbages during the summer, so that will do us, and we can only buy a maximum of 17, so that's what I'm going to do. I think I've got enough uh, fertilizer and stuff back at the uh, the, the farm. It's not ideal. Uh, I totally forgot about this, but at least we're going to get something there before the season passes. So that's what I'm going to spend my time doing now. I'll probably do that off camera, but yeah, we'll get that done for the new season. Okay, really struggling to actually get this donkey to move the way I want it to. I find the third person view is actually a lot easier for that. Yep, there we go. Otherwise, I think you just uh, had a bit of a wonky donkey there for a minute. But there we go. We're on our way. I've managed to plant all of the uh, cabbage, and then I realized that you have cabbage seeds in the barn. But never, you know, it doesn't really matter. We uh, will use those in the future. Uh, another thing I wanted to do in today's episode is we're going to name the two donkeys. Uh, I asked for name suggestions in the last episode, and we had a couple through. So we had Stephen here suggest Claude, and we had Lynx here suggest. Uh, we'll go with Lampwick. He suggested two. But we're going to go for those two names. So there is Claude the donkey right there. And this one here, we're going to call Lampwick, which are awesome names for donkeys. Thank you for suggesting. If you want to name any of my other animals, uh, chuck some suggestions down below. We'll do that in a future episode. And it turns out the one that I'm riding at the moment, this is Claude. So uh, Claude is my noble steed at this current stage of the season. Incidentally, I also got these comments here about the uh, mining. So thank you to everybody who, who commented that. But basically, last episode, uh, or maybe a couple episodes ago, we did some mining. The problem that we had is we hadn't built the mine yet. So if I go to the buildings uh, right here, down in extraction, you can see that we have a mine at the top there and we're nowhere near getting that. We need 5,000 technology, we have 810. However, once we do get to that, then all mines on the map will have iron in them. So the one that's near me at the moment that we did, that was uh, just this side of Piastovia right here on the map, just there, that one doesn't have iron in it, but it does when you uh, build a mine there. There is a, if we go to Skalki down here, there's another mine just on the way to Skalki. It is right there. One entrance, another entrance comes out down there right next to the Skalki. That one has a mine that's been built by the NPCs of the Skalki village, and you can go in there mining for iron. So just like updating you in case you wanted that information. Anyway, right now we're pretty much at the very end of the day anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and sleep. And this is, of course, going to be sleeping through to a new season, not just a new day. So we've gone from summer now into spring, right? And uh, let's go ahead and check. Uh, so yeah, spring or sorry, autumn, I should be saying year two autumn. And there's a couple more things that we want to be planting, uh, at this time of year. So farming is going to be a big focus. Another thing I'd like to do though, is just have a little check on a few things. So first of all, we got these donkeys here. Now it doesn't look like they have bread. And I did get a comment saying that if you don't have a worker working in these animal buildings, they won't breed. Um, however, when I looked on Google, I couldn't find any information to confirm or deny that. If anyone does have more info on that, do let me know, please. 
let's have a look at the pig. Oh, it's still this one's still a baby. Uh, Equinox, you're still a baby. Hold on, let me check on the uh, the management here of, of animals. Do they age? Let's see. He has aged. They age by a quarter of a year with each season, so it is actually pretty accurate to the thing. So next season, we'll have two grown-up pigs. So they can't breed yet, of course. Now, if we have... Oh, we do! I was about to say, if we have any chicks in here, the chickens have bred. Okay, that's fantastic. Hey, little guys, we've got some chicks here. Are they all male? No, we've got some females too. So this is great for longevity for the future. That's fantastic. Was that one just wandering out the door? Where did he go? That's awesome. So, all right, well, I, I, I now can confirm because we don't have any workers in this building and we got the animals breeding. So I'm really, really pleased with that. I was hoping that would be the case. On top of that, our cabbages are actually able to be collected. So they actually grow in one season. Uh, that is pretty quick. That's pretty awesome. And it's going to leave us with a very big farm here. And we can plant whatever we want now that it is autumn in this farm. What we want to do, though, is plant something where uh, it's obviously it's autumn, it gets planted. We want it to be harvested before spring, because in spring, I think that's the only time we can plant the flax seeds. And my plan is to do this whole field of flax, and then we'll have all of the linen thread and all of the actual linen itself to turn into clothing. And that should sell for a lot. So at the moment, we're kind of living a little bit on the bread line. But next year, once we get all that stuff done, we'll be in a much better position. So 200 cabbages going in there. That's a little bit of money if we want it. Or, of course, we can use that for food. So that's pretty good. Uh, now, if we go down to the flax seeds right here, you see, yeah, they can only be planted during spring. So that's going to be useful uh, when we get to spring. So after doing all the harvesting up around the farm area, one of the things I've got a lot of here are eggs, as you can see. And some of them are starting to go off. But I believe what we can do is actually cook with them. So that's what I want to look into right now. Uh, so let's see, this is the kitchen. The kitchen and the smithy just look a little bit similar to me sometimes. Don't know if I'm the only one who thinks that. But let's see, I think it's in the, was it the cauldron? Or it might have been in the oven. Let me double check. Yeah, so right here, we can make scrambled eggs. And it requires three eggs to make one of those, as well as a wooden bowl, which we can do. However, we will need 100 coins in order to do that. Scrambled eggs with mushrooms there as well, if we wanted to do that, or a bit of extra stuff. Hmm, let's have a little look into this. Also, this is good. Potage can be made out of meat and cabbage, so I might get into a bit of that. So now we need 200 at least in order to do this, because we're going to do the eggs as well. But getting into food here could be good. We can either sell it for more money, or we can do something else with it. Okay, so we need 200 coins. Let's figure out how we're going to get that. Now, what I think we can do, actually, is sell some of our linen. So if I come over to here, you see this sells for 28, but obviously we get about half that, so it sells for like 14. So if you sell 10 of that, that's 140. If you sell 20 of that, about 280. So if we sell 20 of these, it should be plenty of money for us. And then I'll probably just spend the rest on like fertilizer or something like that, because we're going to need that too. So let's head into market, get that sold, and then we can get into doing a bit more cooking. So at the market, let's talk to, uh, well, pretty much anybody. And what we want to do here is try and sell all of this linen. And there we go, 280 coins, which is more than what we'll need in order to go and buy those schemes. So that's what we're going to do right now. And uh, we'll have 80 coins left over for a future purchase. Okay, just getting my materials together right now to cook with. We have got an absolute ton of cabbage, as you can see right here. Like, oh, well, 300 and something of that. So what I'm going to do for now is put all this back in here and use up the one that's not in the best condition. And we're going to do the same with the meat. We're going to take out whatever meat isn't in the best condition, see what we want to do with that. But if this stuff is going to start to go off, we'd be better to just sell it. Now that that's done, though, if we come into the cauldron here, let's see what we want to do. So... Potage, we want to make... Oh, I need to make all the wooden bowls. I forgot to do that. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> so here at the workshop, let's go ahead and look at what we can make here. And we're looking to make these things right here, uh, wooden bowls. We do need to buy the scheme, which is going to cost us 100. Uh, so we actually now need to get a load more money because we now have... Uh, let's see here. Okay, so we've got 187 coins left. So we might need some more in a second. But anyway, we've now made this up. So let's see how many bowls we want to make. Let's make up... Uh, let's do 20. Let's do quite a lot. And hopefully we can use them all and uh, get ourselves a good amount of food there. So armed with our bowls, we can now go ahead and take out the cabbage that's starting to go off, which we'll take all of that. And we'll take the meat and we'll start with the stuff that's the lowest quality meat and then use the uh, other stuff after. So let's take all of that for now and leave that in there and go up to our oven. Oh, we're too full. Hang on. Okay, chuck these seven logs on the floor. Probably don't need to take those up to the oven. <laughs> there they go. Into the cauldron. And finally now we can make the potage once we buy it. And we can make up three potage, which is... It's something. <laughs> Let's see what we're missing. We might better make some more if it just needs a bit more meat or something. I didn't realize, but I actually managed to make up 100 wooden bowls somehow. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how I did that, but if we scroll down here, we've got 97 left. That's why we were overweight. So I was trying to make 20, but I guess it makes five each time. So we should be all right for wooden bowls for quite some time. Now, the potage does sell for 25 if we want to sell it, so that's good. But it's plus 59 food. Now, that is quite a lot. Do we have some food we can compare it to? I mean, if you eat a cabbage, that's like four food, for example. Um, eggs 2.4 so potage there does actually sell for quite a, uh, sorry doesn't it doesn't sell for that much but it is actually uh, quite a useful food source to have and uh, will last our citizens quite a while so let's go ahead put the potage in here 
uh, down there. There we go. And maybe they get a bit happier with better food. I don't know. But let's see. Compared to dried food, uh, dried meat is plus 16. So the potage, yeah, that's pretty massive. And if we go to our town management right now, the resources here are food demand. Uh, so 437 and we got 120. So it's good that we're working on this because it's going to need to be up. We're going to go sell a couple more linen thread right now uh, just so we're going to have enough to uh, get us to the point where we can buy the next scheme to cook up the scrambled eggs and that'll be the next thing that we do. Okay, so here we are once again. This time we're going to grab out all of our eggs and look to make up some scrambled eggs in the wooden bowls. And yeah, probably just 15 bowls is, is more than enough. So over at the cauldron right here and if we go to other, then we can make the scrambled eggs. Where are they? Right there. So let's go R, E, F, and we make up five scrambled eggs. I'm turning into quite the medieval Gordon Ramsay in this episode, actually. We've been cooking up some potage, some scrambled eggs. It's really the first bit of cooking that I've actually got into. And uh, in real life, I actually really enjoy cooking, and I'm very good, uh, if I do not uh, if I do say so myself. Uh, now, <laughs> scrambled eggs give us 14 food, but they are, of course, easier to make. Uh, they sell for less, too. But let's put those in there as well. Our villagers will be happy. They've got some uh, variety now of foods that they can eat. And uh, our food demand now... Did it go down? 389? Um, hmm. I swear it was like 437. Now it's 389. Okay, not entirely sure why that happened. Maybe the, maybe some of the citizens have eaten something in the time that I've been doing that, which wasn't very long, but perhaps that's the case. We can make up one more potage as well. So while we're here, we just as well do that. So let's go and make up the final potage. And yeah, as I say, hopefully our citizens will be happy now that they've got some better food. So another episode of Our Town comes to a close, guys. Really enjoying this series and looking forward to making more videos in the future. Very excited to make a much bigger town somewhere else in the future. I mentioned that earlier today. Pretty sure that I'm going to do that at some point. But for now, what I think we need to focus on is building up our dynasty. So maybe looking to get an heir. And also we need to get to a point where this town is making us a lot of money each year. So we're going to do that and focus on that in the upcoming episodes. But yeah, thank you all for watching very, very much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.